fun. Welcome back, everybody, to Red Road Paranormal. Your favorite Red Redneck here. Uh, just a reminder, a member of the Wisconsin-based team, Cryptids and Anomalies in the Paranormal Society. And I'm an enrolled member to Stockbridge Muncie Tribe, Ben Mohicans. Uh, along with me, we have our co-host, Miss Christina Bloom. Ah, hey, Rez, how's it going? Uh, I am Christina it. Bloom. I'm a professional psychic, metaphysical teacher, author, obviously a vodcast host. <laughs> uh, I also have another vodcast that I host and produce. And uh, I am a co-host for From Beyond with Glenn Bottas once a month. And that's out of England. So that's fun. And oh, I nice. am, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I am a uh, descendant of Alaskan Natives and also a member of the Adirondack Park Paranormal Society in upstate New York. And today we have with us Teresa Randolph. She is, uh, boy, this is a long one. Hang in there with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She holds an associate bachelor's and master's degree at the licensing level in clinic, clinical psychology. She's also certified in human protection, homeopathic, homeopathic medicine, and naturopathic medicine. She coaches people using naturopathic medicine and is the owner and operator of Native Way Healing the Mind, Body, and Spirit. She is a Native American descent of the Blackfoot, Algonquin, and Cherokee tribes. She started learning about herbal medicine at the age of three from her Blackfoot grandfather. She continued to pursue natural medicine throughout her life. She uses multiple therapeutic methods such as facial release, body work, light therapy, EMF frequency discharge, magnetic therapy, sacred geometry, energy work, self-hypnosis, movement reflection therapy, homeopathy remedies, and herbal poultices, detox patches, Bach flower remedies, <gasps> bath tea <laughs> rose, okay, bag soaking. <laughs> oh boy, uh, let's see, extracts, oils, and teas. And oh uh, boy, she's had great success in treating multiple illnesses such as lupus, serious back problems, such as herniated discs, chronic inflammation and fatigue, diabetes, depression, anxiety, PTSS, formerly called PTSD, heart conditions, arthritis, emergency treatment, addiction to substances, and more. She also treats animals. She is an ordained minister and officiates weddings from hand festing and Native American ceremonies. And oh yeah, she uses aromatherapy too. <laughs> wow, right. that was a mouthful. Yeah, Sorry about several. That. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're accomplished, Teresa. Oh, yep. it's the wild well lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and honestly, I can say I have been treated by Teresa for multiple things. And it, it's amazing. She's amazing. Absolutely. Yay. Yay. That reminds Yay. me, I have to tell I'm out of some things I need to get from you. So oh, but that's okay. a that's a private discussion. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right. So uh, talk to us about earth medicine. I guess that's what I'm really feeling like we need to bring in. Like, what is it that the earth provides? Um, the earth provides everything from natural antibiotics to um, stimulants to painkillers, um, stuff to quiet the mind. Um, just about anything, any kind of ailment that you're going to have, the earth will provide it for you. Um, herbs are very multiple in what they can heal. Like one herb can do multiple things for you. Um, a lot of people think it's just one or two things for one herb, but they, most of them have like a whole list of things that they can do for you. And I think it depends. Well, I shouldn't say, I think I've, what I've seen um, in the different people that I've practiced with over the years is it depends on your system. You know, everybody has a, a different chemical makeup or energy, if you will, within their system. And I, I put it more towards the energies that they have. And that's what makes up their system and the chemicals that are in their system, you know, cause it's like, for example, 
it's known now that if you have a lot of trauma or, or different things go on in your life that are not necessarily huge trauma, but something that is in the back of your mind for a long time, you know, since you were a child or so, and this will directly affect your DNA and how things affect like your pituitary, your pineal gland, it's, it's your, your limbic system. And okay. then the Yep. The hormones that you give off creates your chemistry. And then that's what affects your DNA. And that's what causes illnesses um, throughout your system. And it'll even, um, there's a lot of things that people think are genetic or whatnot, um, say muscular dystrophy, uh, um, that type of thing. But what happens is when you do carry stressors throughout your lifetime, it, it affects your DNA as to where it will cause you to have the, those issues, say arthritis, muscular dystrophy, lupus, that kind of thing, because you're, the type of stress that you have over a situation affects that limbic system and sends out those chemical messages and it, it messes with your DNA. And then you end up having a lot of issues. And this is something that's um, scientifically proven throughout the years. There's uh, Dr. Amen, who he does um, spec tests mm -hmm. and which are brain scans. And they'll tell you, yeah, they'll, they do a scan of your brain as your brain is functioning. And what he does is he'll do a scan of the brain prior to his treatment. And he's a clinical psychologist as well. And it's wonderful to see this type of technology being paired with natural ways, you know, to, to take care of different things. Um, anyhow, he'll do the spec test and scan your brain and see what parts of your brain are functioning and what's not functioning prior to treatment, then throughout treatment. And then when treatment's done and the differences between them, it's, it's amazing. It, you, the difference that you see in people and fixing that brain you know, having brain envy and, and fixing the brain, people don't realize how important it is um, to have that limbic system be stable and which I don't think any of us do because we're human, but. Right. <laughs> right. Have you ever yeah. met a stable person? I'm just wondering. <laughs> yeah. My chicken. Your chicken. <laughs> there you go. I don't think I have. <laughs> I don't think I have either, to be honest with you. I mean, I think we all have moments of stability, but I don't feel like I've met anyone who can say that they have been entirely stable their whole lives because no. emotions affect our brain, right? We get flooded. Oh, absolutely. You hit about 12 years old and your brain's out the window for the next 13 years. So <laughs> it is. You know, it's, it's like good luck catching that for a while. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it does, it does so much to us. Um, and then as we get older, we realize, um, hopefully a lot of us realize that, Hey, you look back and you go, well, okay, that's done. That's over with. Let's move on to something better, you know? <laughs> so, and you know, and when you, when you look at that too, there might be, you know, multiple, well, there, all of us have multiple different things that happen throughout our lives, you know, through different stages and the things that happen in these different stages creates like layers of an onion of illness on okay. you. And so, you know, a lot of people, by the time that they get to me, they're almost desperate because they've been through, you know, allopathic medicine, different treatment, you know, treatments after treatments that have not had a lot of success. And so then by the time they get to me, a lot of them are desperate. And a lot of them, we live in like instant world right now. And so they expect things to be boom, instantly better, right. you know, you know, within a week or so that they're trying different treatments and you have to, you know, I tell them be patient because it took years to get you this way. It's going to take years to peel off these layers, you know, that like, makes an sense. Mm -hmm. yep. Cause you, you treat one thing and you get done with that. And a lot of times people say, well, no, I have new, new symptoms. And I'll say, well, okay, think back in your life. And was there a time when you had these symptoms before? Right. And they'll go, well, you know, yeah, there, it, there was. And so then we treat the new symptom and take care of that. So each one you have to treat that new symptom and, you know, take care of that at, again, peeling off layers. And I don't think we ever get to the core, but 
you know, we get close. Yeah, we try, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about that because I know we've had several conversations. Um, Teresa also has an Airbnb next to her house. So I I've stayed in it. (laughs) So we have uh, had, we've had plenty of opportunity to spend some time together. And, um, I know that we've gone walking in the woods and she points out this plant and that plant and what it's good for. And by the end of the walk, it's already left my brain, but I know that you're a great resource. And I know that if I have questions, I can get a hold of you and go, okay, what was this for again? Because, you know, I'm, it, takes a, it takes a lot of time and dedication to remember all of that. It right. does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I was lucky enough to get started when I was very, very young. And, you know, there was, I had a bunch of cousins and all of there was all girls and only one boy, the poor boy, who was the youngest. I, he's probably destroyed now, but <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, anyhow, he's got trauma. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. I feel for him. I got five older sisters. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. I was lucky. It was kind of balanced with my siblings. I have five sisters and five brothers, so a little bit balanced. And I'm the next to the oldest. And so I get to lay the smack down. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you will. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting, the different things that go on with, you know, even the dynamics, family dynamics and mm-hmm. things like that. So it, 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 that in and of itself is a role that you place upon yourself and how mm-hmm. you see yourself. So there's a lot of different meditation techniques that I've got into um, these days as far as helping people to get past how they see themselves, yeah. you know, cause a lot of times it's just, it's as simple as how a person views themselves blocks a lot of healing, um, a lot of areas that they need to address. And it's sad, but once they do get, you know, to that point, it's, it's nice. Mm-hmm. They, things open up and it's, it's a nice flow from there, from that point. And I, the people that do stick with the natural medicine, um, and start to have patience with it and, and move on to another path of life. Cause it's, it's almost when you practice natural medicine, it's a path that you walk in life. And I've been walking the path since I was three, you know, right. probably younger, but I don't remember the younger And the reason I say three is because I specifically do remember um, different things with my grandfather walking with him in the woods and he would point out different things to me. And I was out of all those cousins, the only one that would do that. Just follow him with bated breath and everything grandpa had to say, I was right there. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, that's because it's your path. It's your calling. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Um, trauma and all of that, 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 I mean, there are so many different layers that go into illness and wellness. Right. So, um, I know when I was doing more Reiki, I would have people come to me after, you know, going through allopathy for 20 years, modern medicine, for those of you who have not heard the term allopathy, but, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars later, they would come to me to get Reiki because none of that worked. And if the Reiki didn't fix it in one session, then I was a fraud. Yeah. What? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you That's... kidding me? Yeah. 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 They it's... want the heal law right now. Mm-hmm. Do you run into that very much where people get frustrated after you can't fix them like in one treatment or one Constantly. appointment? Yep constantly and it's usually it's usually the new you know new people that um like okay people like if if you were to or different people in my i call my woo crowd Mm -hmm. um those people that are referred to me are more patient with it because they have more experience with it and, and know more about it um but the people that come you know that were like a friend of a friend of a friend kind of thing then they get frustrated and, you know, have issues with it. And I, I keep my patience with them because I can understand. And I, then I explain to them, you know, again, it, it takes, it took a lifetime to get you here. It's going to take time to get you back to where you need to be, you know, and peel those layers off. So, and then a lot of people don't understand, you know, the, 
the different methods and how they work, you know, um, and once you start explaining the methods and how they work, most people are fine with it. But then again, you also have other people, you know, I have people who will come over and over again and they want treatment, you know, fascia release and things like that. Um, and the oils or extracts and things and just to talk. Um, but they don't want to do the shadow work. They don't want to go home and do the things that they need to do for themselves. They would rather just continue to come over and over again and, and not do what they need to do to truly be well. And that gets a little frustrating for me because I like to see people get well. Right. Right. And let's, yeah. let's, let's dig a little deeper into that shadow work thing, because that is a phrase that's thrown around a lot these days. Yes. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> so, I'm glad you yeah. decided to say you want to dig into it. Cause I was just thinking about saying that myself. I had a feeling <laughs> we're connected <laughs> you and me. We're yep. connected. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, so in, in your definition, what is shadow work, Teresa? In my definition, shadow work is the work that a person needs to do with themselves, the things that they are conscious of that need to change to be able to live a more productive, healthy life. Um, and that's a lifestyle kind of thing. Um, and some of the shadow work, we don't even know that we need to do it sometimes because we don't even see it. And it it is up to you know, the people that we seek therapy from to help us see those shadow work that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And I have had a few people, you know, take a little bit of offense. I try to be as gentle as possible, you know, in, except <laughs> I have some close <laughs> friends that, you know, I go, hey, you know, let's rip this bandaid off. You know? <laughs> but, hey, sometimes yes. you got to be blunt straight up. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people yeah. don't listen. Yeah, you do. You do. And, and you know, you, if you approach it, like I've found that I approach it according to where that person is at, at that time. Yeah. And yeah. And that, that works the best, you know, cause there's some people that are ready to rip that bandaid off and then go gung ho, you know? And I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> you know, wonder twins activate, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's have at her. But then again, there's others that take a little bit more time. And I think the, the ones that take a little bit more time as far as in introducing them to shadow work and what they really need to do deep down within um, those are people who are really, really sensitive and they have, you know, isolated themselves from the different things that do bother them that, you know, they don't, they haven't acknowledged those things. And once they do start to acknowledge those things, it becomes very, very hard for them. And, you know, they almost, I've seen people almost become recluse mm -hmm. because it's so hard for them to think about being out in public and you know different th how it's going to affect them that kind of thing very it, you know once they become aware of different things that they need to change do it within the shadow work within themselves right you know and and that's shadow work is basically um being honest with yourself about yourself that's a really good way to put yeah. it that mm -hmm. is a really good way to put it. Um, I we just I hear that phrase thrown around so much. So I wanted to see what you had to say about it. And also, I think a lot of people don't know where to start when it comes to the shadow work, and they don't really understand that once they dig into those things that they've been holding on to, it moves into your cellular structure, right? Exactly. It moves mm -hmm. into your muscles. It moves into your joints. And there's pain that comes with that physical pain that comes with that because yes. your body is literally holding that energy. Yes. And a lot of people don't even know where to start to start releasing that energy. So where would you say, I mean, I know what I would say, but I want to hear what you would say about where to start with that. Um, where I start with, is with homeopathic remedies. Um, the very first homeopathic remedy that I give to a person when they start treatment with me, whether it's just a fascia release, whether it's, you know, emotional things, whether it's an actual physical ailment, um, I start them on actinidium. And I usually start them on a 200C unless they're um, a more really, really sensitive person. Um, then I'll start them on a 30C dose, which is a lot, uh, less than a 200C. A 200C mm -hmm. is fairly potent. Um, and the aconitium, what that does is it shifts the body 
from the flight or fight situation, you know, when okay. and that that's yes. And it sticks with you in that type of sense. And that's what um, ends up affecting your limbic system, your pineal gland, and you pump out all these hormones, you know, from staying in that situation. And that's what goes into your joints. And that's what goes into your very DNA and causes you to have various, you know, illnesses. And a lot of people think it's some things are genetic, but they're showing up nowadays saying, you know, the science is showing that no, it's, it has to do with stress that you've held on to for all these years. Mm -hmm. So I would start with aconitium and give them a, a dose of aconitium and while they're here, and then I give them another dose because I have them here for an hour and a half and working on which, whatever they need to work on. And then I give them another dose before they leave. And that shifts that your body's energy out of being in, in that mode you know, in the fighter, uh, yeah, that it shifts it from being that. There's another thing that shifts it, it's called hojori. And hojori is a, is a green frankincense. And those, that's another good one for mind shifting, just to smell that it, it takes the brain into, I got this, you know, instead of, oh my, what's, you know, and I carry the, I carry both of those on me at all times in case I do come across a situation an emergency situation where somebody needs help. And I, well, <clears throat> I care a lot in my purse. I have a pharmacy in there. <laughs> she does. Nice. I, nice. She does. I do. I do. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen me digging. Yeah. I've seen her digging in that, that magic <laughs> nanny yep. bag of hers. <laughs> yep. 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 And well, that's where I start first with the, with the anxiety and trauma mode to peel that layer back. And I give them a bottle of it, to, of aconitium to take home and hojori. <clears throat> that's part of the, when the person comes and has a session with me for an hour and a half, it includes the oils and extracts that, okay. that they're going to be given, you know, that I use on them. Excuse me. And I send, I write a prescription out for them on how to take it. And the aconitium, I'll keep them on that, depending on the level of trauma that they have had. You know, if it's been a lifetime of, of bad stuff, they're going to be on the aconitium for a while. I'm going to say probably almost a year. But if that's not a year straight, that's going to be pulsing it. Okay. You know, they'll be on it for, say somebody has had a lifetime of trauma and they're coming out of it and they're eh, feeling pretty good. I would have them take it three times a day for four days and stop for four days, you know, pulse like that back and forth. And a lot of people don't realize that that's with herbs. You have to even homeopathic, you have to pulse it. You can't just continue to take something all the way through okay. because, yep. Because what happens is your body will get used to that or it'll cause your body to go in a direction that it shouldn't go in, especially in homeopathic, because um, I'll have, okay, first homeopathic, I must say, a lot of people think that it's, it's the same as herbal medicine, and it's not, and not in any way, shape or form. Homeopathic medicine is something that it doesn't have any, it's made from plants, and it's made from um, actually different um, minerals, things like that but it's diluted. And at the 12th dilution, you don't even find any part of whatever you've used, what plant you've used in that remedy. So you dilute it and you pound it in, in, in water. So oh, I gotta think here, I've done emergency classes in the woods to, <laughs> to teach people how to use the plants around them to save themselves if there's emergency. And how I teach that is I just say, okay, take a 12 ounce or a 16 ounce bottle of water and you put whatever, say, okay, my, my dog Shelby, when she was a puppy, she would eat everything because she would see me picking stuff and eating or whatnot. And she would just eat everything. And she ate poisonous stuff quite often. And that dog, I'd find her laying somewhere in the shade, just, fr you know, frothing at the mouth and throwing up the whole night. I'm like, oh no, what'd you eat? And so I would have to make a remedy out of what she ate to save her. 
And, and that was a homeopathic remedy. So what I would do is pluck out what she ate and I would throw it in a bottle of water and I'd pound, pound, pound. And then you take, dump a little tiny bit out into the cap of the, of the bottle of water and then dump the whole bottle of water out, fill the bottle up again and dump a little bit of, you know, dump that out that you saved, put it back in the bottle and then pound, pound, pound. And you repeat that 20 times. And when you repeat that 20 times, you have a 20 C dilution and you won't even find any part of that product, the, the actual um, herb or whatever the dog was sick on or the person was sick on in mm -hmm. that water. But you give it to them and you give it to them every 15 minutes. And because it's not homeopathic, isn't quantity sensitive, it's time sensitive. So your, your body will take okay. 15 minutes to shift through that energy that is, is changing in your body, that what that hmm. remedy is changing. Because what you did was you captured the, the vibrant pattern of whatever herb you put into that water. And then that'll go through your body and it'll correct that vibrant pattern that's in your, in your body hurting you or ailing you. And so yeah, it would take Shelby usually about four doses. So it'd be about an hour. And then she'd come back around within an hour and a half of being a normal dog again from death to, you know, normal. Wow. Dog. And it's like, okay, here we go. But in this, so it's the same with human beings, but that being said, um, homeopathic is the vibrant pattern of what it's made from. So aconitium is a plant and it's, and that would be for trauma or um, anxiety, any kind of trauma, then that's the vibrant pattern of a plant called aconitium. Okay. See what I'm saying? It's not yeah. actually a raw herb. And so then when you go into herbs, herbs are raw herbs, raw material. So that being said as well, you have to keep your homeopathic remedies away from other raw materials because it will pick up the patterns of other raw materials. Does oh, that make sense? It does, yep. but I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. yeah. I had yep. not thought of that. So uh, thank you for making that important distinction with homeopathy, because I think that there are a lot of people who yes. don't know the difference. I didn't know the difference five minutes ago, you know, so I, no yeah. I had no yeah. idea. So thank you for sharing that. I think that's going to be helpful for some people. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Homeopathic, yeah. it works on a very, very deep level because it works on the vibrant pattern level on the energy level of your body, right. which is amazing. And so you can literally have results within seconds. Wow. Mm -hmm. I've seen wow. some pretty rough people out there, you know, because <laughs> here I am out there foraging for myself. And then, you know, I end up running into people who have issues in the bush because they're not used to being in the bush and doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And it's like, okay, here we go. And yeah, there's been multiple yeah. times I had, had to help them out. And I've seen some in pretty rough shape yeah. and, you know, yeah, helped them out. And it's amazing that, to see them come back around. So, and I, and animals the same way. I've seen many animals having issues and have helped many animals come along their way. And it's hilarious because the some of the areas that I go to forage in, there'll be, you know, the local dog, the neighborhood dog or a couple of dogs. And at first they come, when they come running up, they'll be barking and growling and, you know, and I'm like, okay, fine. And I have crackers that I carry with me, just peanut butter crackers and I'll bust out a cracker and give them a cracker. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, then if I see they're limping or they have an issue, I always carry stuff in my backpack. So I, oh, you got arthritis. So I'll give the dog something for arthritis or whatnot. From that point on, they love me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're my best friend yeah. from that point on. They're like, okay. Well, it's, you are certainly hilarious. their best friend at that point. So <laughs> yeah. fair is fair, right? Yep. 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 Now, you brought up arthritis, which that's a very common thing as we get older now. What would you suggest to, to help out with someone with arthritis? I have multiple things for arthritis. I have Solomon's seal. I have burdock. I mean, I probably have maybe 20 different things or more. Um, Cause I, at the house here, I have pretty close to a thousand herbs, different, you know, herb, raw herbs, or oils, extracts, that kind of thing. I was, I would also recommend um, Arnica, Rust Tox. Um, I have a, trauma oil that's really really good for arthritis it is um, 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I've rubbed you a couple times. <laughs> I have you arthritis in this yeah. thumb, and and she yeah. just massaged it in there. I had no pain for two days. Amazing. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I've got many, many things. And, you know, arthritis is something too, that um, if you work on it for a while, it, it can get better. You mm -hmm. know, you, it's, as far as slowing down the damage that's done on your joints and things from it. And that includes diet as well. Um, you, uric acid builds up in your joints and the uric acid um, is what causes a lot of the issues. And the um, burdock will help get that um, built up uric acid out of your joints and because the uric acid crystallizes in there and that's where you get the pain okay. from so yeah that'll help flush that out and then of course drink a lot of water to flush it that kind of thing yeah did that a gallon of water <laughs> sitting right next to, well what's left of a gallon of water sitting right next to me here so ah. <laughs> yeah i'm a camel too <laughs> <laughs> yeah have to be yeah have to be um, I, I know that the, we last time I was there, I was there with some friends and you gave us a tea. There was a tea for, um, what was that? I, I can't remember what it was. Oh, called. the butterfly pea tea. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. That for? It turned blue, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was to open up the airways. Okay. Yep. Yep, that opens up the airways and helps breathing and helps allergies, that kind of thing. But butter, butterfly PT is wonderful. Turns your tongue blue. <laughs> butterfly PT. Yep. Okay. It's a little blue flower. It's, it's wonderful stuff. And that opens up the airways so well that you'll actually flush. Because I remember a few um, you guys flushed a little bit and and they were like, oh, it's hot. I'm hot. And because it opens up your airways. And so you get better blood flow all the way around. And sometimes you'll get flushed because you have that better blood flow in the airways going. Okay. So I'm asking this for a friend. Does that help with COPD? Yes. And also okay. what also helps with COPD. Um, I don't know if you've ever smoked any herbs, you know, like mullein or um, meadow sweet uh, calendula. There's many herbs that are smokable. And I remember my grandfather smoking, a, you know, he had his pipe and he smoked quite a few different herbs for ailments of the lungs, but COPD mullion is very good for COPD to smoke, believe it or not. And it clear, even if you have like pneumonia or, um, different things going on with your lungs, um, but it's great for COPD. Okay. And so okay. meadow sweet, meadow sweet is wonderful for COPD as well. I've yeah, seen. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah, see, I've, I've never smoked mullen before. I've had mullen tea, you know, yeah. when you're sick. That I'm familiar with. I never knew about smoking. Oh yeah, it's it's good stuff. I had um back in when was it um January first of January. I had I got pneumonia. And so I smoked the mullein and then the meadow sweet, and those two helped a lot. It helped break up all the congestion that was in my lungs and things and be able to cough it out and get it up. So nice. it's good stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. Kind of stinky, but. <laughs> yeah. My kids no. come over, ooh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> what are you burning? <laughs> right, what do you got there, ma? Yeah. So if somebody didn't want to actually smoke it, could they just like light it like in a smudge shell or something and breathe in the smoke? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. I do that a lot. I okay. have a couple smudge pots and I do that a lot. If I want to just, you know, not actually have a whole bunch going on, what I'll do is I'll light it in a smudge pot. Yeah. And just kind of waft it towards my face. And so I don't have like, you know, the big, <laughs> you know, yeah. <clears throat> inhale yeah. of it. So. And that, and I will forewarn you the, the if somebody does um, use meadow sweet as far as to for the lungs and things, because it's really good for that, but it also make you really um, relaxed. <laughs> really relaxed. Well, I'll make a note nothing of that. Nothing wrong with that. I nope. will make a note of that. Really relaxing. Really All relaxed. right. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. All right. I have to come up there and try some of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, you'll have to come with Christine sometime, hey? 
Definitely. <laughs> yep. Woo-hoo. Absolutely. Well, you are just a wealth of information. And, and I know, like, I hang on every word when I go visit her. I'm just like, you just keep talking, lady. I'm listening. Right. I'm listening. Aww. Yeah, she's she's an amazing wealth of information. And uh, I know with all of that, everything that everyone was going through and you were just like, oh, I got this and I got this and I got this and I got this and we can do this and you can do that and you can do this. And I think that we kind of like had you running in circles because everybody had a different issue. <laughs> That's okay. I'm used to it. I, I don't mind that. I, and it's, it, you know, it's funny because you think after all these years, I'd be tired of it. And, you know, but I don't, I, I never tire of seeing somebody feel better you know, when they're walking out the door than when they came in the door. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, and you are such like a beautiful that. soul. I just absolutely love it. Um, yeah. I have a question about lupus because I know we've discussed lupus before. Yes. Because you were diagnosed, correct? Correct. Okay. So how do you deal with lupus or, or any kind of autoimmune disorder? Um, autoimmune disorders are it's very important to watch your diet in in what you eat eat as clean as you can and i know i i'm naughty through the holidays <laughs> i'm yeah i am so bad through the holidays i'm but naughty I, with the like, traveling which i do a lot of so yeah. yeah yep makes it hard and mm-hmm. it's like okay but um i've gotten to the point like you, when you say travel i know what you're talking about and i, I have gotten to the point when i travel um i I go, I cook a lot. And so the leftovers that I have, I put it, I have um, containers that I buy and I put the leftovers in the containers and label them and freeze them. So when I travel, I have my own meals that I can take with me and just go, okay, I'm going to nuke this, you know, and that way I'm not eating out a lot or not struggling to go, okay, where where can I find something, you know, decent to eat? Um, But yeah, lupus is your diet, the main thing I would, I would say is diet. And then also make sure you get enough exercise because if, if you don't get the exercise that you need, when you have lupus, you're going to have all kinds of issues with Mm -hmm. your joints, all kinds of issues. Um, the next thing is make sure that the inflammation is, is under control. And because I know when you have stress, um, the inflammation can get out of control. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things for the inflammation is fireweed. Um, I love fireweed. And that was when I was first diagnosed uh, quite a few years ago with lupus, I had the swelling in my joints was terrible. And I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And um, they actually wanted to put me on a low dose of chemotherapy to get, you know, to stop my body from attacking itself. And there was a little while in there where I would go and have injections, you know, of the chemotherapy. And I thought, I can't continue to do this because this is causing more harm, Mm -hmm. you know? So I was almost like, this is craziness. And so anyhow, um, there was a, I've come across a few of um, anti-inflammatories and the main one was the fireweed. And I do an alcohol extract and then I do an oil with that, um, in the alcohol extract, I don't orally take it. I just put it on my joints and my wrists. And you know, that stuff works so well. I can actually watch the inflammation going down as I, you know, sit there and watch it going down. It's, it's nice. crazy. Yeah. It's, I love fireweed. And um, uh, that actually got me off the chemo for the inflammation for the lupus. So Wonderful. that was, mm-hmm. and that's that a tincture, was, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I do have it in oil form too. Okay. For some reason, some people, and I again, I think it's um, chemistry makeup. Um, can you see me still? Okay, the lights are. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a little good. dark. Okay, Getting yeah. dark. <laughs> here, I'm going to turn the light on here. Sorry about that. I'm looking at this going. Here, let's. Better. There we go. Yeah. Now we yeah. can see you again. Then there was light. Then there was light. <laughs> I love that oh. tree on your wall too. I admired that last time I was there. Oh my, that's my family tree. I nice. it's made out of drywall mud. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I love it. 3D. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically lupus is, you, you, you know, 
stress, control your stress. And there's a lot of um, meditating techniques that you can use. I'm sure you know some of your own. You have some. Oh, of your yeah. Own. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, don't you, aren't you certified in hypnosis? Yes. Okay. Do you, so I'm sure you know there's you have self hypnosis techniques that you mm -hmm. do. Okay, cool. And that's really good for lupus as well, for yeah. the stress when you're overly stressed out. So I, that's what I use is self-hypnosis um, techniques. Mm -hmm. so, I use it you know. for a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Yep. And there, there are quite a few other things for um, lupus, but I don't want to muddy, you know what I mean, say too many things and yeah, right. but, well, I'm sure that there is, you know, like you said, one herb can cover multiple things, but there's probably mm -hmm. multiple herbs that can cover one thing too. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, I, yep. Yep. I see what you're saying. I have not been diagnosed with lupus, but I was curious about it because I knew that you had been, and I was wondering how you handled it for yourself. So. Yep. I have most, yeah, different ways. And like, again, exercise, make sure I, you know, still get around and do the different things that, you know, I've always done mm -hmm. and keep moving and then you know make sure that like i'll take i'll do burdock i'll take burdock um when i know that my joints are you know getting to the point where they're getting a lot of uric acid in them and i need to flush that out then i'll take my burdock and flush that out real well and you know so if i just wouldn't be naughty when i eat i'd be all right right <laughs> so I, I get i have my naughty times too so we you gotta live you. gotta enjoy the things in life that you like yep Yep. You just, everything's got to be in moderation. Exactly. Moderation. What's that? <laughs> it took me a lot of years to learn that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, yep. buddy. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to ask you about. You know what? I'm just going to go back and I'm going to look at the uh, litany that I read earlier. And uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. Got any suggestions mm. for... Uh... Alzheimer's or dementia? Um, there's a ton of different things for dementia. And one of one of the thing, really good ones is Hodori again, which is the green frankincense. Um, because just smelling that alone, it it really it energizes your brain in a way that I can't even explain it until you've experienced it. You know, it's all it's like, whoa, okay. The only the thing about Alzheimer's or dementia. <clears throat> is by the time a person is diagnosed with that, unfortunately, there's, it's already almost too, too late. I mean, they can regain some ground, but unfortunately by that time, there's already been so much damage done in the brain that it's hard to re reverse that. And so I would get, if, if there's people that have dementia or Alzheimer's, you know, in their genetically in their family, I would take a mix of mushrooms, like, you know, the lion's manes, the cordyceps, um, yeah. they have, the, yeah, they have those, the, all the nice mushroom mixes out there right now and get on those. Those are really, really good for the brain. Uh, ginkgo biloba, wonderful for the brain. Um, I, gosh, I probably have a hundred different things here that are just absolutely fabulous for the brain, but mainly the mushrooms are a wonderful thing. Um, the, especially the lion's mane, it really yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Oh, and rosemary, rosemary is very, very good. For, and I, it even in the raw form or in the homeopathic form, um, for memory, for any kind of, um, brain disorders, it's wonderful stuff just to smell it rosemary um in the homeopathic form rosemary i remember when i was in my college days i'd be i was a 3 a.m scholar studying cramming you know th till 3 a.m i'm reading going thinking i'm never going to remember this oh my gosh i'm so tired and you just read 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 well what i would do is cram like that for a couple of days and then the day before i would have a exam or something i would not open a book not look at anything the day before at all and just take a relaxing walk through the woods go forage for something do everything to just relax and then i would take homeopathic form of rosemary the day of the exam and everything would be right there isn't that nice. wonderful i i use um essential oil rosemary essential oil in a diffuser oh nice when, yeah when i'm writing or when i'm you know researching or whatever and it really does help with the 
the clarity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The clear, yeah. I mean, even if you have a rosemary mm -hmm. plant, you know, in the house you walk, because I used to, I, I, for whatever reason, they, the rosemary plants that I grow in here, they don't get along with my other plants at certain times. And so like <laughs> they'll only live for a certain amount of time and then they, they you got on me. But anyhow, in the summer, I usually have one in the house so I can just walk by it and just jiggle it a little bit and smell it, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> just because it is such a uplifting yeah. thing for the, for the brain. Kind of rub one of the needles and smell your fingers and it, it's mm -hmm. the rosemary on it is really, it, it's amazing how helpful that is. I oh, was it absolutely is. astounded at how helpful that is. The other thing that I was going to ask about, and, and I think depression is probably helped by a lot of the things, depression, anxiety, like the, the rosemary and the things that we were just talking about, the ginkgo biloba and all of that, um, especially the lion's mate, lion's mane, I hear is really good for depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, so where do people and get this? Wart. And motherwort. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay, so lion's made use it, it's a mushroom, but how do people use it? Like, do they do you make a tincture? Do you make an oil? Do you just eat it? How, how you can you do use any that? of those? You could, okay. you can eat it, you can make an, a tincture, you can make an oil out of it. Um, you can, I've had some people want to make tea out of it, it doesn't really taste all that good in tea, but you know, it does, you can cook with it. And it, I'd love to cook with it. it. Tastes really good. I've made little um, lion's mane cakes. You know, fry them up in the on, on the stove, and they're really good. Um, one of the real good combinations, I should say, it's it's about the best one that I've found for depression is to treat the brain with the amino acids because that's what the brain is needing for repairs. The amino acids, mm -hmm. like uh the GABA, L-thyrosine, um, I have a really, really good mix of amino acids for that. And people have really good success with this. So okay. do you include like um, L-theanine? Am I saying mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. yep. In that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole, I, I think there's probably about seven different amino acids in the mix that I use. Okay. And yeah, it's in this wonderful stuff. That's a lot of good awesome. success. Yeah. A lot that of good success. Awesome stuff. And go ahead, Rez, you were going to say something. Oh, I just said nice. There's, <laughs> I'm taking this all in. Yeah. yeah. I'm taking notes. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be doing that when, when we uh, release this on YouTube and I got time at work. Right. I'll be jotting down notes here and there. Pause, wait, rewind. <laughs> okay. Play that yep. again. <laughs> yeah. All right. There was one other thing that I had no. questions about, and that is heart. People with heart disease or heart issues. Um, Hawthorne is one of the, the best things that you can do for heart disease or heart issues um, because it it balances the rhythm in, in the heart. And that was because, okay, remember when COVID first started and, and then people um, ended up having a lot of heart arrhythmias and um, heart issues, heart attacks, things like strokes, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, and then after they had recovered from COVID, they still remained with the heart issues, the yeah. palpitations and rapid heartbeat, um, inconsistent heartbeat, you know, all kinds of stuff. And most of them I've treated with Hawthorne. And the extract or the oil, again, depending on the person's um, body chemistry, because people react to different things in different ways. Right. Um, and you can use like, you know, honey for an extract. You can use glycerin for an extract. There's the vinegar, you know, and I've used um, DSMO, uh, castor oil. And just depends on the, the person's makeup. And then I can do, I'll do like a um, Kensington reflexology test to see which one we I've done that on you. Haven't I, Christine? I believe you have. Yeah. 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 To see which one, which remedy is, is best for the, that mm -hmm. person and your body will tell you now the Hawthorne berry will get um, extract or oil, whichever is best for the person um, that'll get that heart um, back into 
the right rhythm that it's it should be in. It's it's a wonderful thing, and it's and I've tried a ton of different other things um, for the COVID issues, heart issues, and but the Hawthorne berry has been the best success for for that. Excellent. You are such a wealth of knowledge. I could just ask you questions all day. But um, all right. <laughs> the next question I'm going to ask you, though, is how can people get a hold of you? Um, the, you can get a hold of me via just text me. Um, that's probably the easiest way. And my number is 906-231-1706. Okay, great. Yep. And I have a Gmail, but just go ahead and shoot me a text and then we can go back and forth from there. So, and I do want to say there's one thing that was kind of in my mind before we um, did this to have the conversation about was a lot of people think that there's not um, side effects or bad things, you know, from herbs. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they just can take however much they want or that, you know, just continue to take them or whatever. And it doesn't matter what you mix them with. Well, that's, that's nonsense. They do have side effects. There are things that you shouldn't take, say, before surgery, you know, because there's like uh, omega-3, 6, and 9. You shouldn't take that for before surgery because it's a blood thinner. So okay. You, you know, those kind of things yeah. like um, skull cap. Um, that's another one. If you take, take that any more than six days in a row, you're going to support a body rash, you know. All right. Like, Good to yeah. know. <laughs> yep. Yep. There's, yeah. So you, it's always good. And then there's other things that um, herbs don't mix well with, you know, pharmaceuticals. And it's always good to make sure that you're not going to have, because like when I do an appointment, I do a pre-appointment and have the person text me, you know, the issues that they want to address, the top issues, and then the medications that they're on so that I'm not wasting time in our session to go over all this, I'm already pre-prepared for them. And I can just go, okay, this is what I prepared for you. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Nice, nice. Um, That was the other thing I was gonna ask you about because it actually is not on your list. Um, What about hives? Because I've been having so many people coming to me and going, these hives are driving me crazy. And I'm like, I don't know. I'll ask. I'll ask. What about <laughs> hives? <laughs> um, that your their immune system is overactive, and then this this year we've um, had are these a lot of people like in Wisconsin, Minnesota area. Mm-hmm. Or, okay, it's this yeah. this winter we have had um, a mild winter, and the bacteria haven't been killed off by the cold, right. and so you've got all this bacteria leaves and things rotting away out there and molding you got a moldy year this year the right. the hives are probably from mold is what okay. i'm gonna say yep because i've seen a lot of it myself and okay. um yep i have things that you can treat for um, mold yeast and dust and what i would do is tell them you know since they can't get to me if they you know e- either text me or or you know, and we could, cause I ship all over the country, you know, different okay. herbs and things. But the first thing that I would tell them to do is set a bowl of alcohol, just as like a couple shots of alcohol in the room that there's in the most, and then just leave that set for 24 hours. Then they take that and put it into a, like a little dropper bottle to save it. And that'll be your mother tincture, your mother. And that's what you're going to make a homeopathic remedy out of for allergies, for whatever is right around you at that time. And so what you do again is, is take a 16 ounce bottle of water and you drop, put 10 drops from that area extract that you made into the water and pound it 40 times, pound, pound, pound against your hand. You have to pound it hard. So you get in that vibrant pattern into the water. Okay. And then you, yep. Then you save a little tiny bit on the side, what I do is put a little tiny bit in a bowl and then I dump the whole 16 ounces out and then I fill it up with clean water again, filtered water. And then I put another 10 drops in there, pound, 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 40 times. And I do that whole procedure at least 40 to 50 times. Okay. And that's, that'll be a 50 C dilution. Okay. That that's your potency of your okay. remedy. 
And so at that point, there's no raw materials in there, but you have the vibrant pattern of what's bugging you in there. And okay. then you take that and it'll, it'll clear up your, it should clear up your, the hives. If, if you've got hives from what's got going on in your air system, you know what I mean? Right. In your area. So that's the first thing that I would tell them to do. Awesome. And I hope that every single one of them watch this because I would never be able to repeat all that, but <laughs> refer them back to our channel, channel to watch this episode. Then speaking of which subscribe, ring the bell, like comment, share, share, get the activity moving so that more and more people get this really valuable, really valuable information because I, you know, you know what I've yeah. enjoyed your, I have watched a, quite a few of your shows now and I've really enjoyed them. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Very kind of you to say. <laughs> we yeah. enjoy doing it. Well, I enjoy doing it. I'll let him yeah. speak for himself. <laughs> no, no, I enjoy this. If I didn't enjoy it, we would still be here, my dear. Exactly. Same, same. Uh, yeah. uh, Teresa, I just want to thank you so much for your time and your vast knowledge. Thank you so much yes. for coming and sharing oh, no with problem. us. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, anytime and if there's other specific um topics that you want to talk about let me know and i can share stuff in the future awesome we'd all love right. to have you back all right all That's right family. everyone take care and we'll see you next time take care yep, yep. bye-bye thank you